Hey there, how's it going? Great to see you. If you haven't been here before, my name's Tim, and on this channel we do a whole pile of geeky film tech camera kind of stuff and teach you all about YouTube as well. Today, though, we're having a look at the A10 Mini Extreme, and in particular, a group of buttons along the top of it that for some reason people seem to not quite get around to learning about. And I suspect you're interested in those because, well, you're here on this video, which is all about these buttons at the top. That's these two rows of buttons here with select bus written underneath them. The buttons along the top are what we call the source buttons. These are the video sources that are available on the ATEM. The ones along the bottom are the target buttons, and these are the ones that the source is being directed to. Let's just have a quick look at the source buttons along the top first. We've got 1 through to 8. These are the camera sources. Those map to the HDMIs on the back of the A10 Mini. Next, we've got Media Player 1 and Media Player 2. Following that, we've got the two color generators in the A10. We've got color bars and black color source. So that's everything we've got along the top. On the bottom here, we have got the Key 1 Luma, Chroma and Pattern. Then we've got key 2, Luma, Chroma and Pattern. We've got the downstream key 1, downstream key 2. We've got digital video effect 1 and 2. Then we've got a dip, wipe, logo and sting. Now the dip and wipe ones are for the dip and wipe transitions and this lets you choose the source which is used in that transition. I'll show you how that works shortly. Then we've got the logo button and the sting button. Now those are also special types of transitions and we'll talk about those in a wee while. But first I want to show you how you can use the two DVE sources along with the picture in picture effect to do some really neat stuff. So first of all I'm going to bring up the side by side picture effect by clicking here and then turning it on. And this is what we see on screen. We've got two pictures here, one to the left and one to the right. Now the one on the left uses DVE1 as a source and the one on the right uses DVE2 as a source. So by clicking up here, I can choose DVE1 and then change the source that is used to populate that box. I can do the same with DVE2 and change the source that's used to populate that box. An example of where this can be really useful is, say, if you're doing an interview with two or three people and you want to change one of the pictures on screen here to show the interviewee who was talking at the time. What you can do is have yourself on the left hand side and have the interviewees on the right hand side and you can change which camera input using the DVE select bus to change that depending on who's talking. You probably want a line producer to do that for you so you're not interviewing and switching but then you can just swap the interviewees around let's have a look now at transitions on the a10 mini extreme this is where we have two different hdmi sources and we can just move between them the first one that we're used to and the most common cut is just a straight dead cut like this moves to another image and back again with nothing happening in the middle the next one that we're used to seeing is a mix image and that looks like this as you can see there's a crossfade that happens and a crossfade back and it's nice and clean nothing particularly spectacular you can of course speed that up to a half second transition which moves a little bit quicker or if you like you can slow it all the way down to two seconds which looks like this takes a little bit longer but sometimes has a different emotive effect or something like that and back again and then we have a look at the dip transition now the dip transition is where you go from one hdmi source through a static image off one of your media players and then it cuts through to a second hdmi source you set a dip transition by pushing this button here next to the mix button and make sure your atm mini is on auto and then you use the dip source here and point that at the black now black is the most common color to dip through and it looks like this cuts through black to the next image and through black back again to this image you don't have to use black of course you can use a different video input don't forget that the black generator is just another video source so what i've done now is i've put a logo image into one of the media players and we at the moment i've got dip selected here on the select bus and black 
color generator is uh, selected as the video source I'm going to change that to media player one and now when I use the dip transition it cuts through my logo just like that and there again like that so that's a dip transition now a wipe transition is similar to a dip transition except that it animates through instead of just the entire screen mixing in and out to use the wipe transition you need to set it up in the atm software control so let's have a quick look at that so here i've got the transitions palette i've selected the white tab and i'm going to change this to the horizontal wipe so i'll click that one there and i'm going to make sure that i've got wipe selected in the transition styles i can do the same thing directly on the atem by selecting this button here and that will give me that horizontal wipe and here's what it looks like just a straight wipe down like this and another wipe transition when i click it again to come back to this image okay now if you want to use a graphic in the middle of that then you need to make another setting in the palette that's this width one here by default you see a wipe doesn't have any width but it does have a softness so what i can do is bring the softness back a little bit and increase the width now by setting the width it makes the fill source available at the moment this is set to media player one which i want but as you can see here i could use any video source that i wanted so now when i use that wipe generator it's going to do this and as you can see that image that i've got in media player one is now available if I increase that width and move the softness down to zero, just as an example, you can see that it now does this. So a solid wipe. So the softness is those top and bottom edges or the side edges if you're going to do a vertical one. And this works for any direction wipe that you want to do at all, including the geometric wipes like this or this. You can do this with any of the wipes on the ATM. This brings us to the last two buttons on the select bus, the logo button and the sting button. I'll start with the sting button because that's easy to explain away. And a sting is where you transition through a video file. Now, this is something that they're planning to implement onto the ATM Mini Extreme, but it's not there yet. So at the moment, that just actually doesn't do anything. So let's have a look at the logo button. Now, the logo button is used for the DVE effects. That's these four buttons here at the top of the transition effects section. So if we want, we can just click on one of those and that sets up a DVE effect. Now let's have a look at the ATM software control and a little bit more detail on how these work. Here's the transitions palette and the DVE tab selected. With a DVE transition, you can push one video source across from in front of another, which looks a bit like this. It just pushes one across and the other one is revealed underneath it. In the DVE palette here, we have the ability to select an effect. So I'll just click on this button here and you'll see now that I have the option of choosing a fill source, a media player. So I've done that. I've got that one selected and I have a duration for the transition of one second. I'll just leave that there. And that kind of looks like this. As you can see, the transition now is my logo in the middle and that just wipes across and uh, it looks kind of neat really. So you can do some really cool stuff with this. It uses a PNG transparency, so you can have feathered edges on it and things like that as well. What you just need to remember is to make sure that the center of it does in fact cover the transition between the two images properly. Otherwise it'll look a little bit odd. So I hope you've learned something new about the ATM Mini Extreme today. I'm going to be making more videos, so click down here and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notify bell so that you can see those. And this video here and this video here are probably ones you want to watch as well, because they'll also teach you something new and relevant to you. So do that. Watch them. They're great. And I'll see you in another video soon.